Welcome back to Peacemaker Rewind. We are talking tonight about Peacemaker Episode 3, Better Golf Ted. This is Sean. And this is Chris. Did you say Ted? I think you said Ted. It's Better (laughs) Golf Dead. It's Better (laughs) Golf Dead. I think there's a show called Better Off Ted or a movie. I don't know. I got confused. (laughs) (laughs) We knew that was going to happen. though. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But uh, Better Golf. Who's Golf? It's the senator. Oh, it's the Senator, senator Golf. Okay. That's who that the, the mission was to you know, take care of. He was That's a butterfly. Where these titles they go right by me, and I'm like, what did that mean? <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't pick that one up? Okay, yeah, no, it's yeah. When they start talking about the senator's name, they, when they starts breaking down the mission, it's Senator, you know, Senator Golf and his family. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So yeah, this episode is kind of a one that it's somewhat. Actually, so this is how we do it. You and I, we watch two of these a week. They're released two a week. Um, so episodes three and four, spoiler alert, we've already seen four. But it seemed to me like episode three was kind of more action heavy. More yeah, of what, a, yeah. them on scene when episode four was more kind of story driven, character driven. Not as much happened. Um, but yeah, what happened again, in episode one and two, too? Uh, yeah. one, one was more character driven and two was more action packed. Yeah, and this one they're pretty much it's kind of like they're on site at this uh this mission most of the episode. Um we haven't talked about the mission yet, but what <laughs> what are some of your thoughts? Uh I mean it's, I'm loving it. I, I love the the fact that there there's character growth within it. You see it within Peacemaker, you're seeing it within Hardcore, you're seeing it within you know Economist and Mern. I mean, you're seeing the whole team yeah. and uh and Abdeo? That's her, is that yeah. her name? Mhm. I mean, we, we even see with her, we see her struggles. So, I mean, as a whole, they're, they're earning the moments that they're getting. They're not rushing them. We're getting to them in, in believable fashion. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really loving this. Yeah. And it's the tone is very unique. James Gunn's tone is good. Cause it's like, there are parts where it's like gory and there's parts where the action is really good and well choreographed and intense yeah there's parts where it's just nothing but plain like funny like raunchy humor yeah the humor is great in it yeah and there's parts that are like really kind of sad and like character driven and like dramatic and it's just kind of a real healthy mix between all of that stuff yeah there's a part in this one here that there's a i think an internal struggle that we don't know about really what that struggle is in this episode until the following one yeah which we'll we'll kind of get into a little bit without spoiling episode four for you, right. but uh, we get we run out the gate. I mean, they're coming out of like their their headquarters, I guess it was, yeah, in the back, and Vigilante's hiding behind a trash can. Yeah, he's just like how he peeks around. What? I'm just a guy uh, behind a trash can. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Start talking about how they're not best friend material. He's, yeah, uh, he's just so he just doesn't give a damn. He doesn't. He doesn't care if he's, if he's seen, if he's not seen, and if he is seen, he starts doing some wacky like slapstick comedy back and forth to try to throw him off. It's it's pretty funny. Yeah, he's a unique character too. Where it's like when it comes to Peacemaker, he's like very like kind of people pleasing. Like he just wants to be good for Peacemaker. But when it comes to anybody else, he's like uber confident. Like he doesn't give two f's about the, anybody else's opinion of him. <laughs> so yeah, the crew is outside of HQ and they're just basically gearing up for their next mission. And you mentioned it already, but a senator named Goff, um, they, they say that he's a butterfly and potentially his uh, his family, his wife and kids are butterflies, too. And to this point, we're still in the shoes of Peacemaker. We're like, what does that even mean? What, is, what does it mean he's a butterfly? Yeah, and they, and they won't tell him. They won't. Yeah. They will not reveal what a butterfly means. And immediately, I mean, Peacemaker is like, hold on, the kids? Right. It's like those it automatically an internal struggles like. Hold on, I don't. I'm not killing kids if I don't have to. Yeah. Well, and then Hardcore was like, "Well, I thought you said you'll kill, you know, men, women, and kids for the sake the of peace of or whatever it yeah. actually is." Yeah. So there's already that, like, hold on, why you're you're going against what you even say? Yeah, there's a bit of a discrepancy already, and you you start to get the feeling that maybe this whole peacemaker character, this bravado that he keeps putting out there into the world, is maybe not quite accurate to how he really feels. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I feel like I, I I don't know. I don't know because he doesn't seem like a villain. He doesn't come off as a villain, right. but he's willing to do whatever it needs to take place to complete the mission. 
And that's a bigger question for me as far as who this guy Chris is currently, because it's like, is he has he always been kind of a, a bad guy and now he's like recently changing and feeling bad about his ways? Or was he always a good guy at heart with that was kind of forced to do bad things and has gone along with it? And he's starting to recognize that he's been doing things that he shouldn't be. Doing. You know, like there's kind of a there's a difference there. Yeah, I feel like he was with his dad. And he was always trying to please his dad. So he was doing things that may have been against his moral compass, mm -hmm. but would please his father's. Yeah. And that's kind of where he, he may have gotten in trouble. And that's where he got caught and probably and everything that's taking place. Right. And now he's realizing, hey, th th this may not have been the best way for me to go about doing things. Let's start thinking and listening to myself and not worrying about, you know, douchebag dad. Right. Yeah. Um, so they all get in the team van. They're they're heading to their location they need to go to. And uh, it's funny because if you know, I mean, I'm sure lots of people out there watching the show know John Cena. He's a wrestler. And he had some kind of line of dialogue where he believed that pro wrestling was real, but climate change is fake. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it was Albedeo. She was like, yeah, these are the people that believe, you know, pro oh, yeah. wrestling is real. Yeah. But climate change is a hoax. Right. And I'm like, oh, that is such a funny line to be saying to John Cena. Right. During this show, Cause like you said, everybody knows him from, yeah, you know, WWE, you know, don't give up. And Peacemaker was like, well, well yeah, right. So Facebook is just lying to me all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, th th I mean, that line was great, but they go, th they move on, they show the family, and then she swipes right on her iPad, and there's a picture, and everybody knows your iCloud syncs to all your devices. And uh, oh, yeah. that's WhatsApp that very... app or whatever. Yeah. Abadeo yeah. chose a picture that should not be seen by. That was a very else. personal picture that everyone in the van yeah. did not need to see. Right. And. uh <laughs> Oh, he was loving it too. Peacemaker was. He was cracking up. <laughs> oh, everybody was. Economist was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, <laughs> then she threw hardcore under the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> Saying it was her idea that she should get her out of the room and they're experiencing, uh, you know, situations differently now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was a nice little moment of levity before they have to go kill some people. <laughs> oh, well, we found out, you know, Peacemaker was a butt baby. <laughs> uh, see, like little scenes like that just like break up the tension and they're just so funny and they're so appropriate. Like you get this character yeah. right away, just like his dialogue just keeps informing you of who, who this guy is. It's so funny. I I'm not going to forget butt baby. And I may use that in my personal <laughs> life with somebody. <laughs> Someone's going to be a butt baby. <laughs> Abadea later in the episode, she, you know, she's mad at him. She's like, I always knew you were a butt baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So where do we go from there? So they, they, they finally pull up to the house. Yeah. And, you know, you got Economist, Abadeo, and uh, Mern in the van. And then you have both Harcourt and Peacemaker kind of scoping out the place. Just watching it, you know, waiting for the family to pull up. And they, they pull up. And then the kids jump out. There's like an, an like a big bodyguard, so a CIA type guy. Yeah, is with them. And then you have the you have this little little judo master. This little guy he had to be no bigger than four foot five. Yeah, dressed in green. It's a uh, not very intimidating looking to put that. Put no, that but he's pretty intimidating once he gets going. We find oh. out a little later. But uh, yeah, the family. That, I mean, he's judo master. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the family gets out and they're kind of walking to the house and, you know, Mern's telling him to take the shot if he has it. And he never gets a shot. Mern gets really mad because they now they're in the house. Yeah. And then you, then you see his family walk by the window and they're all like really stoic looking forward. That was really walking. spooky. That yeah. Because that was like, oh, that's not right. Well, they yeah, all just, of them were like, "What, what, what's going on here?" They were like, they were like robots. They were equidistant from each other and just like zoned out in the distance. And you're looking at it, and you're like, "Oh no, that's bad." And yeah. Peacemaker at this point, even like, he's like, uh, or it might have been uh, Harcourt where she was like, she noticed that too, the same thing that we noticed, and she was like, "They're all butterflies." Yeah, oh yeah, she called it out immediately. Yeah, and Mern's like, "Take them all out, all of them." Yeah, and Peacemaker is like, it's like even the kids, it's like even the kids. And he's freaking out. He's there. He's got all of them in his sights. They're all sitting at the table, and they drop this like honey in a bowl, and their tongues fall out. And yeah, the proboscis, just, just like a butterfly. <laughs> oh man, it's nasty. And he's sitting there, and he's freaking out. And Hardcore sees him freaking out. Yeah. And she tells him take a deep breath because she sees this whole thing happening. Right. But before this took place, Hardcore went to like I don't know why she stepped away. I don't know if she had to use the restroom or something. 
But Vigilante followed him. Right, yeah, of course he's there. So now he's there. He's talking to, you know, you know, Peacemaker, and now everyone knows he's there. You're like, okay, well, now he's a part of this. He can't go nowhere. He's stuck in this mess that he wasn't, you know, ready to be in. But he sees his buddy kind of cracking or just having this internal struggle with shooting these kids. Yeah. And he does what a good friend does. He told him to back away. And he stepped in and took out Mama Bear. And, I know. know. That's another thing. This show is so interesting because it's like anybody that could step in and just shoot an entire family as easily as he did um, without giving it a second thought. You're, you're like, well, that's a that's a psychopath. Yeah, but there's at some, the same yeah. time, he's like, he's just being a really good friend. To yeah, he was maker. taking care of a friend, no, a friend in need. Right. And, that's and he, pretty much he wasn't what it making was. fun of Peacemaker. He was just like, you know, just kind of move over, buddy. I got this for you. Yeah. And he was being real kind. <laughs> and it was and such, he stepped in and like, uh, just like a weird way to think about the, uh, but the dude is a psychopath. Well, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Well, even Hardcore had a hard time with like, I mean, Vigilante went up there and just took the shots. Yeah. And One when another, when Susie Bear went down, you seen Harcourt's like, oh, all of a sudden, just like trouble with it. Yeah. And if she's struggling with a situation, you know, it's got to be messed up. Yeah. And Vigilante didn't even flinch until he got judo kicked in the head. I know he went that one by one, got the wife, got the two kids, but couldn't. He was getting get... ready to take that final shot. Yeah. And Judo Master comes flying in and uh, Judo Master handles himself well. <laughs> one thing I'm loving about the show, Peacemaker gets the crap kicked out of him. Mm -hmm. He's not like invincible. He right. gets, he's been whooped three out of four episodes now. We yeah. watch, I mean, he yeah. gets the crap kicked out of him. And, and then he kind of has his second wind and has, you know, has his way at it too, but he doesn't walk away, you know, even hardcore. without his bruises. We saw how capable she was in that bar fight. Um, yeah. Judo master takes her out. She ends up like, you know, falling down a ravine a bit and hits her head against the rock and she's out for quite a few minutes afterwards. Um, it kind of saves her cause she's out of the scene. And she's doesn't get drug into the mansion like uh, Peacemaker and Vigilante. Do yeah, later. Judo Master beat Vigilante and Peacemaker at the same time. Yeah, Peacemaker stabbed Vigilante. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a, just an accident. He was sorry about that. <laughs> it was like, hey, bro. <laughs> it's like the, the way it was done. Like when he stabbed him and they were and acknowledged it, he was like, "Hold on, dude, that's yeah. not cool." <laughs> Yeah, so Judo Master ends up getting the upper hand mostly, I think, and it was a fairly even fight until um, uh, Goth actually comes out. Goth's all bloodied. He's got his family's blood all over him. Yeah. And he comes out with a shotgun, and um, they basically, um, Peacemaker and Vigilante are now unconscious, and they're going to drag him into the mansion. Yeah, and they tie him up in the basement, and it's like, it's like torture season's on. Yeah. I'm like, oh, boy, this isn't going to be good. No. And uh, no, it's not good. And the rest of the team is kind of at a loss about what to do. Um, Abadeo, she comes out and she finds uh, Harcourt and this other guard that was working with Judo Master, just like a regular guy, though. He seems like a yeah. regular Secret Service agent or something like he's not a metahuman or anything. Um, he, he's like, whoa, 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 because Abadeo points the gun on him. And he's desperate. He's like, you know, I'm a family man. He was talking about his kids or whatever. His wife, yeah. Uh, but he doesn't want to take the shot because she's never killed someone before. Yeah, and that's what we find out. Yeah, she just she's never even fired a gun before. Right. We find that out. So she's she she is really green in the world yeah. she's living in right now. Yeah. Which really makes me wonder what is she doing here? What what right. was what's her purpose here? And Harcourt was mad. <laughs> She was like, just take the shot. Just do it. Until finally, was it Harcourt that did it? Harcourt is one that did it. Yeah, she yeah. found her weapon, and she just fired like three shots into him and just ended it. Yeah. She was like, he's seen too much. He knows we're here. We, we this, had to, this had to happen. There was no way around it. Yeah. And then, you the, know, they get together and with Myrn and everyone, they, they, and they wind up going in the house, and they tell economists to make sure nobody leaves. Right. And it's on watch. He's watching the video game. He is the last one. <laughs> I thought you would want go you know yeah. making sure no one leaves but dude dude's got it dude may not look like he's got it but he's got some gumph to him yeah he was under uh desperate measures and he went for it he did what <laughs> needed to be done for sure but yeah we're not okay so now we're, we're back and we're in the basement and you know the team is in the house we're looking for him they walk by you know the, the dining room and they see all that 
and Abadeo, she finds, they find out, they realize that he's in the basement. Yeah. And she finds the door to go in there, but it's some green, like, honeycomb or hunt. It was something. weird. Yeah, it was some kind of alien looking, like, green glass that they couldn't get through. Some kind of barrier. Oh, and that was funny, too, because uh, Mern, he put this remote explosive up to it, and he couldn't get it to go. <laughs> Remember, he was just like trying to get it to go and it just wouldn't go. And so finally, eventually, you just have to go up to the thing. I felt that way, too. Like when you're trying to like, you know, turn these. I'm trying to like turn these lights with my phone or whatever. And you just get frustrated. And of course, finally, when he walks up to it, that's when it it blows the crap out of him. He flies across the room. At first, I thought he was dead. I I I did, too. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, this isn't the kind of show that I would be shocked if they killed a main character. Definitely yeah. halfway about about three four episodes in, right? It, it would have felt right. Yeah, because that is one of these shows. It's like anything goes, anything yeah. could happen. So um, he's knocked the crap out of, and prior to all that taking place, we have basically a torture scene happening in the basement. Yeah, they're yeah. torturing vigilante. They're gonna cut off his like, pinky toe. Yeah. <laughs> the most important toe. He's gonna <laughs> fall over. <laughs> well, first he like electrocutes him. Yeah, and he's yeah. like interrogating peacemaker peacemaker you're not gonna crack me i'm not gonna crack right eventually he's like no stop it <laughs> give him something <laughs> right peacemaker they're not that close that peacemaker you know isn't gonna let this happen um, and yeah he, well then there was the line where he starts cutting his baby toe off he gets mad at him for not maintaining his torture to, <laughs> his, <laughs> he couldn't his get torture it. equipment he couldn't get it through his toe uh yeah that was funny you've never i've never seen a torture scene like that before where there was so much banter back and forth <laughs> and and a mangled baby toe oh and well and on oh. top of all that he pulls his mask off him he does so yeah. now vigilant vigilante's actual identity is known yeah to chris yeah which we speculated in the previous episode but yeah so that's the way it is like he does know who this guy is he recognizes him after a few minutes he recognizes him well he does the whole yeah <laughs> That, yeah, that was funny. So he can't see me here or uh, recognize me in a lineup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but uh, yeah, he is the kid brother of some other friend that Chris used to know at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, so the secret's out, I guess. But Vigilante he held on to that uh, secret identity fairly well. Yeah, and well, I mean, now that they know each other's identity. Yeah. I mean, I, they can actually, because that was the one thing that uh, Peacemaker said when he showed up. So I don't need, how can we be best friends if I don't know your secret identity? Right. And now, you know, that's out of the bag, yeah. which, I mean, may make them actually even closer. So it, 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 that should be a fun relationship to see where that goes now that they know who each other are. Yeah. Uh, but at this point, it, the explosion from Mern upstairs is actually what knocks uh, Peacemaker over in his chair, kind of busts the chair. He breaks out of the rope and they're finally able to kind of get into fisticuffs with uh, uh with Goff there. Goff. And at this point, Judo Master had already left. Goff had told him to... I guess go get uh, help or go to some secret base. Go or something. tell them what's happened here. Yeah. So I um, guess it's to tell other people that are butterflies that there's somebody out after us. Some there's there's a hit on us. Yeah. And the judo master does, and uh, economist sees him in the video He's camera. Like, f f f. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just just judo master is going in his car and he just t bones the hell out of him. Yeah. I'm like. Oh, I don't care oh. how good you are at martial arts. If uh, you get you can't dodge a car, a vehicle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And he was crawling out too. an economist. Oh, that was gruesome too. An economist had a crowbar and was just like trying to but hit him, him once. Out. And it took like five times. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then you can see like you, you can see the psychopath with an economist, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because after he successfully like I thought killed him, but uh, yeah. put him in, unconscious. He's like he starts dancing. He's like there's like that, that like rush through him. Right. That he's like, oh, this felt good. We can do this again, type thing. Judo master, hard to kill, which is kind of a uh, a little bit of a tease for episode four too. But this guy's hard to kill. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so economist, he's he's he takes care of judo master. Judo master is kind of off the board for right now. Um. And uh. Down in the basement, uh, underneath the mansion, there, Peacemaker and, and Vigilante, they finally get the upper hand on um, Goff. They end up shooting him in the face, blowing his face fully oh, off, square off, and then yeah. something comes out of his face, and we find Peacemaker finally figures out what 
Yeah, but and, and honestly, for us, it's the first actual instance that we get to find out what you know a butterfly is, and then and this is what we're talking about here. Butterfly. It's very Things. literal. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's creepy as hell looking. Yeah, I mean um, that thing is nasty. So at this point, you would assume that these butterflies are kind of like alien creatures, and I think Chris assumes this too. That are either growing people or taking people over, kind of like an invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing. Um, we're still not quite sure yet as a viewer what's going on with these. We I, and after that scene that they go, they go back to the van, and you see like how many suspected butterflies there are, and it it's it's not like oh, it's five lot. or six, it's like the worldwide whole, baby. Yeah, it's everywhere. So yeah. it's it's curious where we're going to go with this because it's I mean obviously this team can't take care of a worldwide pandemic. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Funny saying that word right now, but I <laughs> know <laughs> we just got through one of those, please. Yes, that's that's not continue. No, um, no, not with like body snatchers either. No, that would be even worse. Uh, that kind of does it for this episode, though. I mean, it was a lot of action, it was like on site mission action. Um, we got a lot of interplay between characters, we got a little bit of development as far as why this team is put together to begin with. Apparently, they're here to, to fight whatever this maybe invasion is i don't know we still yeah. don't have a lot of details and, and i'm excited and i'm going to share that emotion with you <laughs> good <laughs> um but yeah i guess we're uh we'll be back for episode four uh to find out a little bit more about uh what the heck's going on in this show. yeah maybe we'll get some more clarification maybe we will go ahead and get waller a little bit more uh, is yeah. she going to be a little bit more in this next episode when it comes to abadeo uh will we get some clarification of, of anything because everything is so blurred right now. There's right. There's so, this there's, show is good. It's uh, it's like putting us in Peacemaker's shoes, basically, because we know about as much as Peacemaker does. Yeah, like, there are very little scenes that we get that inform the viewer more than Chris is already informed. Um, so they're really yeah, kind of keeping things close to the chest in the show. Yeah.